Queensland has recorded its highest crime rate in more than two decades, sparking renewed calls to fix the crime crisis. It comes as Premier Stephen Miles meets victims of youth crime to discuss what solutions they would like to see implemented. Joining me live now is Bond University Associate Professor Dr Terry Goldsworthy. Dr Goldsworthy, thanks so much for joining us. We just saw that uh, confronting package there with Matt Cunningham. And in Queensland, recorded monthly averages of 50,000 offences in 2023. We've heard uh, people talking about they have no purpose, we need more police, we need more parenting. What is not working and what needs to be done, in your opinion? Yeah, good afternoon, Janie. Certainly there is a crime crisis uh, in Australia. You know, if you look at youth crime across the big states such as New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, most of the indices indicate that crime committed by youth is increasing. Um, you know, Northern Territory is also problematic. Uh, in Queensland, we've had an 8% increase in crime overall, 13% uh, for personal crime and 11% for uh, property crime. You know, robberies went up 16% in Queensland. So one of those uh, people in your story just before I came on was quite right. He said, start with the parents. And I would agree with his sentiment that, you know, if we're going to fight crime that we have at the moment, driven to a large extent by youth crime, you need to look at um, three issues. The one is uh, preventing the criminal offending in the first place. Uh, the second is keeping the community safe when a person is offending. And then the third issue is how to rehabilitate that person so they don't continue to offend when they're released from custody, etc. You know, if you look at parenting, uh, most of the youth offenders come from uh, homes where there's DV, there's drug use. The youth offenders are engaged in drug use themselves. They're disengaged from education. They have no skills to get employment. So we basically see a breakdown of social structures that would assist and prevent that young person from going into a, a offending cycle where they've got no supports to avoid doing that. If we could fix that, we would probably stop a lot of the youth offending that we're seeing. But that takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of resources. Uh, you know, we don't train people on how to be good parents. We just expect they will be. Unfortunately, many people fail. Do you think there needs to be more accountability for offenders? Yeah, look, certainly young people, uh, by and large, I think, are aware of what they're doing is wrong. I mean, we have a system where we need to show for children under the age of 14, uh, 10 to 14, 13, sorry, that they knew what they were doing is wrong. And that system works very well. We're seeing a very concerted and slick push to raise that age of responsibility for criminal acts to 14. We've seen Northern Territory raise it to 12 and they'll raise it to 14 very shortly. Uh, I think that's problematic because the offending's not going to stop. You're still going to have the offending happening. What you're going to see is there's going to be no accountability for that offending. Um, you can leave the criminal justice system as it is. It operates fine, but you can fix up what is causing the offending. And that's what we're missing here. We're seeing pushes to change the criminal justice system uh, to hide offending in reality, when we should be looking to address the root causes of the offending and not touch the criminal justice system, which is just fine. Thank you very much. Crime is one of two central issues in the upcoming election, along with cost of living. So what is the current government doing, in your opinion, and what needs to be done from what you've just said again and in you know in terms of more that needs to be done with the current uh, premier yeah look we've seen uh, as i said large increases in crime across the board in queensland uh, youth offending is still very problematic we saw a 16 percent increase in the number of charges finalized against youth offenders last year from the children's court we know that our serious repeat offenders have increased uh, to 20% of all youth offenders, and they commit about 54% of our youth crime. Uh, so youth, serious repeat offending is increasing. We've got about 460 of them. Um, you know, we can't put these youth offenders anywhere. Our justice system has nowhere to put them in terms of youth detention because those places are full. We have children from uh, 16, 10 years old being kept. I think one youth was kept for 38 days in the police watch house because we now use our watch houses as youth detention centres. So there's a real mess here. The government has failed to plan uh, at a strategic level uh, in terms of we're going to keep more kids in on bail. We're going to stop them getting easy bail and going out and offending on bail. We're going to perhaps introduce harsher sentences. But it didn't have the other part of the equation, which is where are we going to put these children? There's nowhere for them to go. And now they're being shoved into police watch houses, which creates problems for the police, et cetera. We've also got problems within the police service, 
Uh, 29% of the police are actually supportive of the executive, so most of them have no faith in their executive leadership. And 50% of police indicated in a recent survey that within the next two years, they hope to leave their position. Uh, and we're down. We've got less police on the beat this year, or 2023, we had less police on the beat than we did in 2022. So you talk about the police and how they're dealing with it. We're talking about parents and they need to step up. What about education in schools? Do we need to educate our children more in the classroom? Well, I think uh, it is important we teach young people about accountability and responsibility. I mean, generally, uh, good parenting will do that. You know, you teach a child the difference between right and wrong, appropriate behaviour, inappropriate behaviour. Uh, it would not be remiss to have the education system pick up some of that slack, I guess, where parents aren't uh, perhaps succeeding there, to instil in kids that, you know, you need to do the right thing when you go to school. I mean, but for instance, you know, there's data come out this week that tells us that there were 600 incidents involving weapons in Queensland schools last year. 600 involving weapons. Now, you'd have to ask the question, why does a child feel the need to take a weapon to school? What kind of home environment have they got? Uh, and why do they think that's appropriate? So I think there's a role for the education department, but again, it's not the role of the education department to be your parent. It's there to assist parents in reality. Do you think uh, online issues are a factor in this? Look, certainly the uh, up and coming generation is influenced by social media. They engage in risky activities uh, to highlight their uh, fame on social media to get views, etc. I mean, I've got an 18 year old daughter who wants to be a vlogger and is on TikTok and uh, each day gives me an update on her views. Um, so it's obviously important these young people, social media and their exposure and how popular they are. Unfortunately, a number of young people are using social media to hide exploits that are unlawful and extremely risky in terms for them and also the victims of their crime. And that's problematic. So I, we have seen some steps up here in Queensland where if you stream your offence or anything to do with the offence, then that's a circumstance of aggravation and exposes you to potentially harsher sentencing. Uh, so I guess that's one deterrence. But, you know, the social media companies uh, need to probably be more alert to these kind of things and any inappropriate behaviour or criminal behaviour that appears on their systems should be immediately removed and that user prevented from accessing the platform. Dr Terry Goldsworthy, always great to get your input and expertise and thank you so much for joining us on Sky News this afternoon.